when we talk about streams and rivers, what we're really talking about is that the state considers this water to be a public property. So in other words, if you want to use surface water for anything other than a domestic use, you're going to have to get a permit to take this water out of this stream. Now, domestic use is considered individual or household use for family purposes. It's considered to be uh, watering livestock and other domestic animals up to the normal grazing capacity of the land. Or it's considered to be irrigation for gardens, orchards, and lawns if they're smaller than three acres in size. For any other purpose, uh, for larger scale irrigation, for larger scale cattle production, you're going to have to get a permit to take the water out of this stream. Surface water in the state of Oklahoma is really managed on the basis of a watershed. That's a very common term that you're going to hear in hydrology and water quality. A watershed is basically just a topographic area where if the rain falls within that area, it will all drain to basically to one outlet. And so a lot of, a lot of the work that we do is based on our watershed. Here in Stillwater, or we're in Cow Creek right now, we could refer to ourselves as being in the Cow Creek watershed. But there are actually various size watersheds. It can go as small as a parking lot. It can all the way go up to a size of the Mississippi River watershed. It's Cow Creek eventually drains into Stillwater Creek, into the Cimarron River, which then flows in the Arkansas River, and then eventually into the Mississippi River. So a lot of what we do within our watershed will affect our streams and rivers. So if we're talking about protecting our water quality and keeping sediment out of our streams and rivers, really, it's also a product of what's happening upland in that watershed. One of the very best practices that can be performed to help protect this water is the use of a riparian buffer or a riparian area. This would be the vegetation that's on either side of the bank. This vegetation is critical because it filters the water and whatever it might be in the water before it gets into the stream, but it also helps to hold the banks in place. And stream bank erosion and failure is one of the dominant sources of sediment in many of our streams and rivers across the state of Oklahoma. So what we do in the upland part of the watershed is going to affect our streams and rivers. And we need to consider what's going on in the watershed when we look to protect our surface water supplies. When we're talking about rivers and streams, you're going to commonly talk about how much flow is in that river or stream, which basically just refers to what the volume of water passing a certain point per unit time is. And one of the really good sources of information for stream flow across the state of Oklahoma is the U.S. Geological Survey. If you just go to www.usgs.gov, you can actually get real-time stream flow information at a number of gauges that are across the state of Oklahoma. One of the things that we do as hydrologists is to use that data to actually calculate the probability of certain size events. So you'll hear a lot about a 10-year event or a 100-year flow event. So what does that really mean? What is that? It's, it's actually called a return period, but what does that really mean? What it really means is that that is on basically on average the frequency of occurrence of that size event. And it doesn't mean that if we had a 100-year event today, that we couldn't get another 100-year event tomorrow. It just means on average that that's typically the time period at which it occurs.